Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And Hurricane Ida has moved through my area. We have returned back home. I'm very fortunate to have very little damage done to the area in which I live and also the home in which I live as well. We did fairly well here. Thankfully, the uh, track shifted quite a few times throughout the weekend. It was a very nervous weekend, but fortunately, again, the area that I li live in was spared a lot of major damage, just quite a few outages in terms of internet and power. We, in fact, just got power back about two hours ago and internet just came back as well and I was very very pleased that this happened that fast last time it happened it took days it was actually a much less severe storm but I guess this time the damage wasn't as bad to the lines and such however there are many around me that are, aren't near as fortunate as we are and what's really sad is that and I'll, I'll throw some videos and pictures up of the damage that's just been reported so far. This is the, the day after the storm has moved out of um, the, the state. It actually slowed down quite a lot. It was supposed to be in and out of Louisiana in about 12 hours, but it spent all of Sunday and, no, I'm sorry, pretty much all of, yeah, all of Sunday and just about all into the night until I think around uh, 10 o'clock in the morning today in Louisiana. It, it slowed down way more than, than they uh, were hoping it would. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, the whole week had just been blurred into one day for me. Uh, I was literally up for 24 hours on Friday by the time we got out of uh, the path and to where we, we were going to evacuate to. And, it, of course, when, when you have a storm that's... You originally thought it was only going to be a Category 3, but then it turns out to be a Category 4, and then it's pretty much a Category 5 when it when it's about to hit where you live at. It's, it's a very nerve-wracking weekend. But anyway, back to what I was saying beforehand. There were many around me that weren't as fortunate as I was, and the areas in, that were most heavily affected by this were areas in, in which I actually grew up in and went to quite a lot as a kid, and I, and I still go to quite a lot now. Um, but of course that that's all changed because th these towns have been absolutely just erased off the map and it's not New Orleans. New Orleans actually did fairly well. They, they, they lost power, but compared to what many thought was going to happen in New Orleans, is that they've done pretty darn good in this whole scenario. Now, of course, any damage, anyone losing their house and property is, of course, tragedy. And, of course, people losing their lives. But so far, I believe there's only been one uh, confirmed death because of this. But hurricanes, y'all, when they do damage, they, they take everything. You know, it's not like uh, someone robbing your house and you lose some things. It's it's a pretty big deal when a, a major hurricane, hurricane like this moves through and it's over an area for days on end like this one was. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe, um, maybe not this week, but next week I will have a, a charity stream up. All profits from that stream, so donations or anything like that, will be given to... Um, a charitable organization that will be working down here to help the people that were most affected by this storm and also all patreon donations for this month as well will be going to um, that charitable organization as well i'm looking into um which ones are doing what specifically and by the time that stream goes up again probably not this friday but next friday once i have everything set up I'll let you guys know who exactly it's going to be going to. So, and I'm also working on, and I, I know right now with everything, a whole lot of the community is on the bandwagon of don't buy premiums and all right now. But if I'm going to be doing this, I want to, of course, have some incentive for you guys to um, donate and to kind of you know, make, make it a little bit fun and just have a couple of premium ships to give out. I was thinking something along the lines of three or four tier six premiums, three or four tier eight premium ships, and maybe two or three tier nine premium ships. And again, I know with everything going on with the game right now, but just as a way to raise money for people who have lost literally everything over the weekend. This is a game, it's temporary. One day, the servers are going to shut down. I know what a tanks has been running for what, 10 years almost now, and World Warships is approaching its sixth anniversary, but eventually one day, the servers are going to shut down. Uh, Wargaming is either going to be uh, a company that's going to go out of business or they're going to move on to other things. But these people have lost their entire life's work in their house. Some of them have lost their livelihoods. Businesses have been absolutely just 
destroyed by this and it's going to be months before if not years before these people can really get back to work so these people need help right now and that's what i want to do i want to use this channel to do some good and that's why we'll be giving out those premium ships as a way of saying thank you to you guys for helping these people get back on their feet after this absolutely just terrible terrible disaster so Again, not this week, but uh, next week we'll be doing that that charity live stream. Probably a bit longer than my normal live streams as well because of this. And again, all donations on that stream, all Patreon donations for this month as well, will be going toward that. And I'll figure out how exactly we're going to choose who wins these premium ships and all. Again, I think we'll be doing something along the lines of 16 premium ships will be given away uh, for this, or tw 12 or 16. Again, we'll see by the time that all comes there. I'll, I'll make a... Um, a big announcement video for that, but I just want to give you guys a heads up on what's going on for this. But moving on, we do have a little bit of news today, which is a pretty big deal for the long-awaited arrival of one ship, and that is the West Virginia 1944. So those of you who don't know, because I'm sure there's been plenty of new players that have um, joined in the period that we've been waiting for this ship. So... West Virginia 1944 was supposed to be, well, and this is the story of Wargaming Gables, which of course, you know, right now Wargaming's word is worth about, you know, 25 cents, if that. But back in the day, Wargaming announced the release of a ship called West Virginia 1941, which was one of the ships that was at Pearl Harbor. And essentially what they did was they down-tiered a Colorado stock hull, and that's about it. They, they adjusted a couple of stats here and there, but at the end of the day, it was a stock Colorado at Tier 6. Of course, the thing is, the Colorado has 16-inch guns. 16-inch guns at Tier 6 is is pretty pr pretty good sill clubbing material. So the ship was released, and it did pretty good. It's a good ship. It's decently popular in clan battles right now, although BBs in general are kind of a toss-up right now in clan battles. But of course, the ability to just overmatch everything and if you pin something good lord it's going to blow up especially at tier six and the colorado one of its strong suits is that it does have 16 inch guns at tier seven and it has eight of them and even at tier seven you can punch crap through the nose with the colorado's 16 inch guns but many players are wanting a post pearl harbor late war refit west virginia or colorado class and many thought that the west virginia would be one of the ideal ships to release like in in, in, the, in this configuration and yeah i'd agree it took part in the battle of the Surgao strait which was the last i believe one of if not the last one of the last capital ship or well battleship to battleship engagements ever and it was kind of poetic because these Pearl Harbor ships, which have which had been sunk by the Japanese at Pearl Harbor, had been refloated, refitted, and just absolutely freaking roided out in terms of firepower and AA power as well. So Wargaming announced that they would release West Virginia 1944 at a later date. Now Wargaming says at a later date. That might as well be, yeah, we'll put this down on a sticky note somewhere, and when we brush across it on my desk, we'll actually put it on our roadmap. And that appears to have happened now. We now have a date for the release of the West Virginia 1944. And it's a date that kind of makes sense, and here is the post. Now, this is from Sub Octavian, who... I'm surprised no one on the subreddit has put a natural bounty out on this man's head yet. He's not a very popular figure right now, but he is one of the upper um, employees at Wood Warships at the moment. So this is what he said. So he's replying to, to someone called Dr. Venture who said, Wargaming will never release West Virginia 1944. If they were going to, they would have done it by now. He replies, we will release West Virginia 44 in 2023. I personally apologize for taking so long. I understand we should have closed this case much earlier. We specifically did not give any date when talking about her before as we were not sure about when and how, and it actually worked against us, unfortunately. This project has was backlogged several times. It's not the case anymore. We've added the ship to the roadmap officially. It actually happened a bit earlier, but in the steam of all stuff that's happening, I think we did not actually mention it. P.S. There are chances for late 2022, too. Oh, God, that's a wonderful 
Well, English. Uh, 2023 is hard deadline, not later. So we have a date, 2023 or even perhaps even 2022. Now, is this a date and month? No, Wargaming generally don't do that. They generally say, if they do give dates out, they say like early 2023, 20, uh, late 2023, uh, summer, fall, winter, maybe, uh, because the, the patch dates, you know, it's every five weeks and sometimes a bit sooner, sometimes they're, they're a bit later. And of course, just the way that, you know, a company works, it's hard to put a, a hard line date, you know, date and month and year on something, but having a date now to back up when the ship is going to come out. So I can see now I'm, I'm just, you know, looking at it from another perspective, not trying to defend Wargaming or anything, but looking at it from Wargaming's perspective, when it, they explain how long it takes them to make these ship models and stuff, it is understandable that something like a new ship would take a little bit of time to release. Uh, they, they, they've released several videos showing the entire process of them developing a ship from the ground up. And it takes thousands of man hours. And that's shown in game. Again, we mentioned this plenty of time. Art department, you know, hands off. Uh, yeah, hands off. Um, hats off to them. <laughs> God. Again, I've been awake for like ever recently. But anyway, so now West Virginia 44. It's not a from-the-ground-up ship. We already had the Colorado model in-game. But this is, of course, a late-war refit with a lot of changes and stuff, too. And this is also a historical ship. We have to remember that. Wargaming is very, very, very precise when it comes to historical ships with details and such. Uh, you can look at any of the real still ships in game, like the Missouri is a really good example of this. Some of the details they have on there, uh, but the Massachusetts, the Alabama, um, in any real historical ship, they try to do their best to get as close as they can. In most cases, I'm looking at you, Roma and Latorio. Now take that information and then look at everything that they've been pushing out recently. I mean, again, the, the amount of premium ships they released over late summer, they, they were on like a marathon of releasing a premium ship a week there for some time. With new lines and stuff, it's easy to see. Again, looking at it from Wargaming's perspective, how they just kept kicking this can down the road, and it did come to bite them here in the end because this was something that was cited in the whole mess of the CC fiasco and such. You know, they told us the West Virginia 44 would come out later. It's been four years. Where is it? You know, things like that. But it has a hard date now. So 2023 comes and goes. No West Virginia. We riot. Simple. So West Virginia 44, what should this ship be? Well, if you ask me, and this is just my idea for it, it's my personal idea, and it's something I think the game actually does need right now in order to get things back to closer range, if you will. So what I want the West Virginia 44 to be is an absolute death glacier. By that, I mean this ship, it's limited to 20 knots, because it's not a submarine, you know? It's, it's limited to its historical speed, 20 knots. This is a big downside to the Colorado. It's a big downside. Well, I can't say historical for like the American BB split, but along the same concept of it's a dreadnought, it goes 20 knots, not a knot faster. It's a big downside of those ships. So for this to be a tier eight ship, first off, they're gonna have to do one or two things. Give this thing a super hill or give it a 32 millimeter plated hull. I think they should go with the second one because 32 millimeter plated hull at tier eight it's great for rewarding you for angling, and if you do mess up, you can still get absolutely blapped by something with large guns. A super heal, you can kind of negate that, but this would reward skill for angling, of course. Two, since it is going to have the dual-purpose 5-inch turrets, that's one of the upgrades that the West Virginia and a lot of the other Pearl Harbor battleships got, uh, this ship should be a secondary BB. Now, it doesn't have a lot of these 5-inch guns like the Massachusetts have. I believe it has four per side. So these should be very accurate and have a decent rate of fire, which the American secondaries generally already do have. On top of that, I want so much AA on this thing that a freaking FDR thinks twice about attacking it. They absolutely bolt down every single piece of AA that they could fit on this ship after Pearl Harbor. Then give it DFA on top of that. I want this to be a no-fly zone. You're not allowed to touch this thing until it has been touched by many, many, many shells of HE. Okay. On top of that, too, 
I think it should get a little bit of boost to its accuracy because the Colorado, like the gameplay you're watching right now, loves to troll you. It's famous for this with the accuracy of its guns. But having eight 16 inch guns at tier eight, that's kind of par for the course for most tier eight ships. And those that do have an accuracy level of the Colorado tend to have a sub 30 second reload, which is something you could go for too. But I think the more accurate guns would be a better trade-off for, again, having eight 16-inch guns at tier 8. And plus, at the ranges that it will have to engage sometimes, you do need that accuracy to keep into the fight. So, along with all of that, it should, of course, have something along the lines of the Massachusetts Hill and the Massachusetts Cooldown Time on its damage con. If they would do that, I think this would be a fantastic tier 8 premium ship. Then you need to do this wargaming. Release it for free XP. Do it. 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 If you want to win the hearts and minds of the community back, you release this as a free XP ship. That's just free PR adv advice. I'm not going to even charge you for that. Oh, and of course, it should be equipped with the uh, spotter plane as usual. I don't think boosting the accuracy that much at tier 8 would be too strong for this ship because the flight time for these American battleship shells is absolutely just lethargic. Most American battleships, until you get up to like the, um, the Iowa with its slightly faster velocity and then even with the Montana at higher tier, the only reason they're even really remotely decent at longer ranges is because of the number of shells they're putting down range. Plus, again, it's faster than like the North Carolina and the Colorado. But even with the Iowa and the Mon Monte shell velocities, it, it still takes forever for those shells to get out past about, shoot, 22 kilometers is really pushing it to accurately and reliably hit anything with an American battleship. Now, if you're really good at predicting the velocity and such and the, the flight time, where the shells are going to be, sure. But most people have plenty of time to maneuver out of the way of your shells if they're even paying the slightest attention when being fired at with an American battleship, even with like the Vermont and such too, of course. So I think that would kind of balance itself out there and again it's going to get up tier to tier 10 quite a lot but anyway i want my death glacier west virginia 1944 be a great addition to the game make it a free xp ship save some face gain some pr cookie points from everybody wargaming again free pr advice from from me will they do that probably not it's probably going to be a tier 8 premium ship heck they may even make it a dockyard ship wouldn't surprise me at this point but that is of course if this does come true but as I said, we do have a hard date now, so it doesn't come out by then. We riot. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Just an update on what's going with Ida and our hopeful next week charity stream for the victims of Ida and a little bit of War Worship's news in there as well. All right, guys, hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.